Without wasting any more time, let's do look at question number four, which is also organic chemistry. So we're given the flow diagram below shows how various organic compounds can be prepared using compound P as a starting reagent. Now, what I always tell my children, if you are given a flow diagram like this, I would always say write everything out. It just makes it much more easier. Remember when we did question number two, when you see it, you actually understand it a little bit more. What I mean by this, like bromination, write your, your two Bs, write out C5H12, write out your hydrohalogenation, your hydrolysis, and actually draw out these structures. You will then be able to see what was added or what was then um, removed. Number 4.1 says write down the meaning of the term hydrohalogenation. Already by seeing hydro, I can see that it is, the, it is an addition reaction. So it is the addition of hydrogen halide of a hydrogen halide. And this is added to an alkene. So when we are adding something, it is an addition reaction by breaking a double bond. We could have also said the addition, the addition of hydrogen. Hydrogen, you could have just written it as H and a halogen, which could then be Cl to an alkene. Remember addition reactions, we are breaking double bonds and forming only single chains. Number 4.2 says write down the structural formula for compound number Q. If we had to go up, let's see where is compound number Q. I can see this is reaction number P. This is then reaction one. Q, bromination is going all the way up. So I know that it was removed, meaning that compound Q must then have a double bond in it. I um, can see that it's gonna be one, two, three. I'm going to have a double bond on that one. And then remember to always put your hydrogens. Organic compounds have got hydrogens around it. And always make sure that it actually has eight lines, four lines around it. One, two, three. I'm going to put another one. One, two, three, and four. Therefore, we have now followed the octet rule. Number 4.3, reaction one is an elimination reaction. Elimination reaction means something was taken out. Right, and if something is eliminated, we take away, we move from single chains all the way to double chains, to double bonds or triple bonds. Now it says we must write down the type. Now there's various types of elimination reactions. And what was the type of elimination reaction in reaction number one? This was cracking. Cracking is actually another type of elimination reaction. I know most of the time we use where we're removing water, dehydrohalogenation and so forth, but cracking is also another type of elimination reaction. Now 4.3.2 says we must write down the molecular formula of compound P. So you're already looking at the term structural formula, molecular formula for compound P. We would have had C8 and then H18. Let's look at number 4.4. I must write the IUPAC name for number R. Remember, IUPAC is a system which we use to name organic molecules. We separate our numbers by commas and the word and the number by a hyphen. We put the word dye, which shows that there are two of the same things, which is bromo. So 1.2 dibromo, and then that would then be propane. That will be the IUPAC name for compound number R. Number five, hydrolysis reaction. Write down the balanced equation for the formula. The formula that we, we are to have, let me just close there. The formula that we are to have will be C. We will have a Cl with all our hydrogens around it. Remember to always put your hydrogens around it. Plus now you could have had NaOH, or you could have had water, H2O, or you had, could have had potassium hydroxide. Remember this will form an alcohol. So wherever this one is sitting will be replaced by an OH in the same position. That will be an OH. And then all the other hydrogens around the molecule then remains at the same place. 
remember your hydrogens, and then let me just put that one there. The subproduct of this one here will be represented by whichever one you chose here. So I could have had NaCl if I chose NaOH, I would have had HCl if I chose water, or potassium chloride if I chose KOH. And this is my molecular formula. And then the last question, for the hydrolysis reaction, I must write down two conditions. Conditions are what is needed for the reaction to take place. You could have written any two. You do need a mild, mild heat. You need mild heat. You also need a dilute. You need a dilute strong base. Dilute strong base. This could have been NaOH. You could have said lithium hydroxide, or you could have said potassium hydroxide, or you could have said water. So for this reaction to take place, these are the type of conditions that you would have needed. For this question, you cannot fail. Read your properties and then do your best.